Next on BYU Sports Nation, Cougar basketball going dancing again. Officially making it an NCAA tournament trip as of yesterday. We'll react to the seed, opponent, and location. We'll be joined by head coach Mark Pope to discuss BYU's first round matchup against Duquesne, what it meant to make the tournament year one in the Big 12 specifically. Is Zach Wilson headed to the team he thought best fit his skills coming out of BYU? And women's hoops continues postseason play. Who did the Cougs match up with Thursday night in the new WBIT? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The madness is upon hey. us. Happy Monday. I'm Spencer Linton. He is a man who is packing his dancing shoes, Jerem Jordan. I am uh, so excited for BYU to be in the dance. We all are, right? Like, last year was so disappointing not to make the NIT, Spence. For this team to go to this situation and have an opportunity to march madness is so exciting. BYU's dancing. This would be the third year in five for Mark Pope. It's the second because of the COVID tournament, right? So hey, let's go, man. This is the most fun that I think we have as sports fans all year. March Madness, Thursday, Friday, all day, baby. Just games, games, games. Saturday, Sunday, I love it. It's the greatest time of year in terms of just like a sporting event from start to finish. I think the first two rounds specifically are like Christmas morning for sports fans. Four games at a time, like all day. That's pretty awesome. It's so fun. I do I, enjoy the World Cup quite a bit, but I think the first two days beat out any of the days of the World Cup, if that makes sense. There are just so many upsets. Like, the World Cup yes. is super fun, but typically not as many upsets, upsets Morocco do not Morocco going to, like, the quarters or whatever was Correct. crazy. South Korea, when you were there, made a, a crazy run. So Croatia the with the BYU Cup. Sports Nation. Carmen that making a wild. run to the final. But ultimately, who cares about Croatia making a run? It's about BYU, right? Or like my five-year-old uh, Tate, you know, t two years ago picked St. Peter's in his bracket yes. all the way. They make the Elite Eight. I'm like, bro, you had St. Peter's in this game. This is it's about the Peacocks, fun. okay? Yes, and the is. Retrievers of UMBC. <laughs> the Retrievers. <laughs> I love, I love trying to know the mascots of everybody. Like I couldn't have told you Duquesne was the Dukes before last night. But now I know. I love learning all of this stuff. Hey, BYU gets a team that's in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1977. Uh, and all BYU fans hoping that uh, it's a very short-lived. You thought it would have been a hot minute since BYU had won a game. How about just go? Oh, so Duquesne's going to be hungry Thursday. Hey, we're so. going to get into everything. I know that the expectations were that BYU would have a better seed and we'll talk maybe about a better location. We're yep. going to discuss all of that. So rise and shout. Let's get to what's trending. I mean, I'm just super excited to be out there and do it with my teammates. Um, this is what we've been working for all year since the summer, making sure that we're ready for this, this first game. I think the guys in general understand the opportunity that we have in front of us, and, and we're excited to go try and take advantage of it. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Dance the night away, or in BYU's case, Dance the morning away because they're playing in another morning scenario. Yes, they are. In Spence. Omaha. <laughs> this is what BYU does now. <laughs> Apparently, it's a thing. Three in a row, the like 11, cast, 30 or 40. The alt cast on BYU Sports Station is back on yeah, Thursday. 20 great minutes. Uh, BYU gets that six seed. They'll take on the 11 seed, Duquesne. First round in Omaha this Thursday. And a matchup against, we think, probably Illinois, the three seed, if BYU gets through their first Come on, contest. Moorhead State. Okay, a lot of questions surrounding BYU seeding and location. Let's just start overall with uh, the all-encompassing question, Jerem. How do you feel about the draw and everything it entails for BYU? Listen, I like the opponent the most uh, because you look at Duquesne, and it is a team that just won the Atlantic 10. They are hot. They were a six seed in their own tournament and won it. They've got a pair of guards that are really good in Day-Day Grant and Jimmy Clark the third. Great defense. Those guys combined for almost 32 a game. They made 145 threes. You got to stop those guys. I like BYU's chances in this game. They don't, they haven't seen a team like BYU. And listen, Duquesne's on fire. But BYU out of they the big They were so 12. good that the streamers came down with 15 minutes left in the game yesterday. Let's go, man. Let's go. That's when you know you are ready to win the game. The Dancing Dukes, like you said, haven't been there since 77. BYU is the six. They are the weathered, hardened, experienced, older team that is more efficient on offense. Uh, Duke, uh, Duquesne, the Dukes, are a better defense, but uh, I like the matchup. Certainly we were expecting a five. BYU was a five. 
and then bracketing yeah. principles pushed yes. them down. More on that in a second. And then location. Certainly, we were hoping for Salt Lake. There's some disappointment that it's not that. But uh, Omaha, you know, there's some history there. Uh, you know, Mark Pope, I talked to them this morning. That's coming up. He says he's born in Omaha, so that's a fun connection. And then, look, Brigham Young, going back to where Brigham Young was sustained as the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1847. This is the place. Council Bluffs is across the river, yeah. bro, from Omaha. And uh, so there's some history there with church history. So I like, uh, I like the opponent yeah. uh, more than I like seed and, say, location. But I'm not going to be overly disappointed about this situation because guess what? I think it is a good draw for BYU. It is a winnable game in the first round. And then in the second round, you're playing a three seed in Illinois. Normally, we would be like, if BYU wins. Normally, we're like, oh, man, that's a really tough game. BYU's beaten a two seed in Iowa State. Would Baylor get a three? Yep. Three seed? A four seed in Kansas, a five seed in San Diego State. BYU's got good wins. They've beaten teams of the ilk of Illinois this year. Um, so let's go. Let's go. Let's see if BYU can't win a game or two in this year NCAA tournament. The three point shot and the way that BYU does it makes them a difficult matchup for any team they could potentially face in the NCAA tournament, including Duquesne. And we've spoken about it on several occasions, especially last week. BYU's coming off a rough game. They, they did not play well against Texas Tech, and it would show, like evidence would show that BYU has typically played well after a bad game. They've been sitting on a tough performance against Texas Tech. I like BYU and the matchup against Duquesne. I know that Omaha is certainly not Salt Lake City, and there's so much, like, so many people are like, how in the world does that ha-? You know what? Overall, it's a great draw. Like, big picture, yeah. this is a great draw. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get into the dynamics of, like, how this happens and whatnot, like, in, in just a moment. But, like, just look at Duquesne as it is. And th- there, uh, I believe that uh, someone on the committee said that before the game started between VCU and Duquesne, they determined that the winner of that game was going to be the 11 seed. So VCU's metrics are a little better than Duquesne's. It could have been VCU. It could have been VCU, yeah. and people be like, oh, yeah, VCU makes sense as an 11 seed. Duquesne wins, and it's like, oh, their numbers are a little low. How do they get an 11 seed? I don't know, but I'm not going to ask It and because I like it. There is speculation that it was whoever won that conference championship game on Sunday between VCU and Duquesne was going to get the 11 seed and play in Omaha. Which, by the way, look at the other 11s. NC State, who BYU beat in November. How good was that win now? Still a quad two, but they went five in a row to win the ACC championship, including beating Duke and North Carolina. I know. They're a hotter team than NC State right now. This is something out of Jim Belvano's book. Right? Right? Throw Bailey, what's up? Oregon just won the Pac-12 title, ripping through Arizona. And then New Mexico is 22 in net, 23 in Ken Palm. They can fill it up, and they would have been an 11 seed type matchup. BYU got the best 11 seed possible. 100%. If you're going to be a six, BYU got... Duquesne, which is the best 11 possible. With that said, they're conference champ. They're playing well. And won eight in a row. Took, just took out Dayton. That was a top 25 win. So, yeah, fifth longest streak in the country. So, if you have to be a six and be an 11, hey, I like it. But tell us about bracketing principles because Sunday play certainly yes. seems like the one. Yes. But it's really about Kansas. So, the overall seeding list comes out, and you see the number 17 next to BYU. And everyone's like, what the heck? Like, BYU wasn't just a five seed. The number 17 overall seed would suggest that they are the best of the five seeds. So how do they slide all the way into a six? How do they drop four spots? So, and, and some people are like, well, Salt Lake City is a Thursday, Saturday scenario. So is Pittsburgh. Like, what? what's going on? Like, how come they couldn't be a five seed in one of those places? Like, you have to play a Thursday, Saturday scenario or prepare for it the entire way through. So yeah. even if it's Thursday, Saturday for the first two rounds, some of those teams – in this case, all of the five seeds are then playing in Friday, Sunday scenarios after that. That hurts BYU. Okay? Then you have to consider, and I talked to Tom Homo yesterday. He said, literally. He was on the committee for three years. Yes, he, he knows. He knows the process. He yeah. called me and he's like, hey, I just saw <clears throat> all your tweets. Just want to clarify something. Like, when BYU's name pops up, if, if they are, like, their overall seed is placed in a, uh, a scenario where they're going to play on a Sunday, there will be a red line through them immediately that says, nope. You have, to, you have to move them yes. to accommodate what BYU has requested. And rarely, if ever, is it going to be up. Rarely. It'll be down. Like, right? yeah, in a perfect world, in a great, like, it would be awesome that BYU would bump up one spot to 16 and they'd get a four seed. You don't get rewarded for asking for a religious a, exception. That's exactly right. So it's unfortunate, but it just fell that all of the five seeds, at some point through 
the first round up through the Elite Eight would have to play in a Friday-Sunday scenario. Yeah. That's how San Diego State and Gonzaga and St. Mary's, all teams, Hi, friends. Below, all teams below BYU in yeah. the overall seeding list, get the five seeds, and BYU falls to the six. Gonzaga was the one that seemed to kind of creep up and take BYU's spot, by the way. Like yeah, they're, specifically they're Gonzaga. number 21 in the overall seeding yes, list. Yes, they're the one that benefited the like, most. So ain't that a thing, Spence. How does that, how does that work? How is that fair? Are you, are you bummed about that, by the way? Not being a five when BYU was the first five? I'm a little bummed that BYU can't play with the number that they earned, right? Yeah. Like, they earned a five seed. They were clearly a five seed. Yeah, and maybe more there's comments some, on that later. Maybe there's some consolation in seeing the overall seeding come out, and it's like, oh, yeah, we still earned that, but, like, mm -hmm. There's something to that. However, McNeese, Grand Canyon, like those teams I'm cool not playing are guys. so good. Like Gonzaga gets a as terrible 12. draw. They're better as 12s than Duquesne is in 11. Yes. Like I'm excited about having Duquesne and that, that matchup. Yeah, Gonzaga gets it an awful mean, draw. doesn't mean BYU is automatically winning, but you look at the 12 seeds, look at the net, look at the Ken Palm, look at the strength of schedule. I don't think we'd even want to touch UAB after the bowl game a couple years well, ago, Well, they right? ruined BYU's perfect season in basketball in 1988 as well. Well, so maybe there was some heck to pay there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, in the end, all good. Like Nobody wants James Madison or McNeese or Grand no, Canyon. I don't want James Madison after the, uh, after the football season, let alone the 31-3 and basketball season. Riddle me, riddle me this, though. BYU 17. I do think back to the Iowa State game and not – Finishing that out. They win that, they're a four seed, Jerem. Oh, I think so. That's yes. what I was going to say. Yes. I think BYU was this close to being a four. They're a four seed. They're not playing in Salt Lake City, though, because the Salt Lake City scenario with the four or five shows that like, that's later playing in Friday, Sunday. So BYU yes. would have been a four seed somewhere else, somewhere else, but they would have been a four seed had they beaten Iowa State. And it's just a little bit easier of a matchup. Uh, in terms of the run you're hoping to make. Now, ultimately, and we'll dive into this this week, it's about winning a game in the NCAA tournament. Certainly two would be great. It's required the National Player of the Year previously, so the expectations aren't that you win two in this tournament. Yeah. But this BYU team is capable of going to the Sweet 16. They are. Sean Farnham said as much as on ESPN. We've seen BYU at its best be a very good team that has defeated a 2, 3, 4, and 5 in this tournament, not to mention some others, right? This team is as ready for an NCAA tournament as any BYU team ever. Yeah. And hopefully they can show it. It all depends on if they hit threes. But no one's seen the passing of an Ali Khalifa. Fusini Traore is going to get some one-on-ones, which, by the way, there's a Fus Drame on uh, Duquesne. Oh, Fus and so Fus. Fus and Fus are going to match up, <laughs> which is going to be fun. So I, I'm excited. BYU's dancing. It's a winnable game in the first round. Then you could, could play Illinois potentially, yes. likely. And then BYU's beating a team yes. of the ilk of Illinois. So let's go, man. I need to clarify a couple of things, too, because I know some fans are like, oh, it's the non-conference that hurt BYU. That's why they got – like, you guys are talking Iowa about State Sunday play. Iowa State had a terrible non-conference, You're talking too. about Sunday play. It's the non-conference. No, let, let me tell you. I have clarified with a former selection committee member. The non-conference and everything that goes into it is factored into the overall seating. All of that is understood. Yeah. So, like, non-conference strength of schedule – is included and they in were everything. Still and they 17. were still number 17. Yep. Okay? And road record was included in all of that. Like, they take all of it, all of those into consideration and then make the overall seating list. And then there's a scenario, it's like, well, BYU is requested not to play on Sunday, so they clearly cannot be a five seed, which stinks. But it is what it is. And frankly, they fall to the sixth seed. They get a favorable matchup. In Duquesne. Big picture, this is really good. And you know what? It stinks that Kansas is the four seed in Salt Lake City because, yeah, that, that, that too would have prevented BYU from being in Salt Lake City because they're never going to have two teams from the same conference yes. play each other in the first two rounds. Potentially in the first two rounds. Right. And, and uh, Mark clarifies, too, I didn't know this, in the conversation you'll, you'll see coming up, that is a guideline, not a rule, he says. Yeah, it's a guideline. Guideline. They don't like to do it. A rule. They don't have to they do it. They want to avoid potential rematches, which, by the way, BYU makes the Sweet 16 run. Iowa, Iowa State. State. What's up? Speaking of, Iowa State highlights. Bang it three, Jax. Let's go. Iowa State in Boston would be quite the scenario. <laughs> right? Is Danny Ainge going out to that one? Uh, Visiting all the homies? First things first. Beat Duquesne. I don't care if it's <laughs> ugly and it's by one point. Just survive just, in advance. Just that, win. that is what this tournament is about. Get to get to probably Illinois, and then just maybe BYU gets a third shot at Iowa State in Boston. That would be in the fun. Sweet Six. By the way, I, shout out to Iowa State fans in Kansas City. They dominated that place. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, they call it Hilton South. Yes. Right? Like we, sta- we say Cougar Stadium South. Yeah. Which is a Brian Keel quote, even though it had been Lavelle Edwards Stadium for a few years. That's okay, Brian. <laughs> we all understand. Anything in Vegas, we're like, oh, Lavelle Edwards Stadium South. Let's go. Omaha, here we go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. How many Peyton Manning gifts did all of you get yesterday? <laughs> Steven Ashworth wins again. <laughs> it's at the home of Creighton, which, Omaha! by the way, BYU won there in uh, 2010. Uh, so let's see if BYU can't uh, do it again. Our question of the day. BYU, a 6 seed. They'll take on the 11 seed Duquesne in Omaha on Thursday. 1040 Mountain Time, 1240 Eastern Time. How are you feeling about the seed opponent location in this first round of the NCAA tournament? Let's get some responses. Nick Anderson on X says. Nick Anderson, like from the magic? I have no idea. Probably not him. <laughs> Quote, optimistic in all aspects. There you go. The goal was to get to the big dance in the first year of the Big 12, and here we are. I like the path to the Sweet 16. Cougar Nation will show up wherever BYU plays. I just wish I could pronounce Duquesne. <laughs> it is not Duquesne. I, it's I could, Duquesne. I don't think I could spell it before Googling it 28 times yesterday. <laughs> now, now I know how to spell it, I think. Okay. Mark Pope propagandist on X answers. <laughs> I think Duquesne is a significantly more favorable first-round matchup than any of the 12 seeds yep. would have been. Just like we la- laid out. Illinois will be tough, but beatable. Yep. BYU has their most realistic path to the Sweet 16 since Jimmer. And what if Moorhead State pulls off a 14-3? Like, this tournament has become crazier every year. Yes. Like, we did not think that a 16 would ever win, and now they've won two of the last, what, four or five years? It's been wild. Cannot wait for it. Yeah, the challenge for Illinois is, like, they're on the high of highs right now. They just won the Big Ten tournament. Yeah. And they're playing super well. So they're supposed to destroy this team. This, this, this is what makes this tournament special. It's just sneaky. Like, we've seen several tournament championship winners that are, like, unbeatable. Like, Arizona. Purdue last year. Purdue. Fairly Dickinson. By the way, the early start is better for Ali Khalifa in the fasting, and it's better for Max Rest for Saturday. So there are pros to that. And it's also alt-cast on BYUSN. So let's <laughs> 20 go. minutes on Thursday. Dallin Arnold on X says, I really like the matchup against Duquesne. Super favorable first game for BYU, although BYU still has got to go out and play yeah. their best game. Totally. Nobody is safe in March. There's, there's a chance that this team 0-1s this with football, right? Amazing regular season, and then in the postseason disappointment, you know, losing at the very end the last couple of games. This BYU men's basketball team has got to, got to win a game in the first round. And if they win two, we'll start to have the conversation about, well, wait, is this the best team BYU's ever had? Because they did it in the Big 12, right? As opposed to third place in the WAC, six seed, lead eight. I still think 81's the best team BYU's ever had, then 2011. But maybe this team makes an argument more if they win the first round for third Best or top three maybe, in BYU history. Maybe. Like, they have to win that first-round game, which brings us to this. Listen to it on BYU Radio coming up on Thursday. BYU and Duquesne pregame coverage coming up at 11.30 Eastern time on BYU Radio. The Dukes were 16-11 and 11 before this current eight-game win streak. Hey, they've, they've turned it on, on for sure. Yep. Cougs can play some ball, too, especially after a bad loss. Up next... Jerem goes one-on-one with BYU head basketball coach Mark Pope, discusses what it means to him to make the tournament in year one of the Big 12, and what does he know about Duquesne at this point? He says guidelines. Man, come on, committee. (laughs) This is BYU Sports Nation. This segment of BYU Sports Nation presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. It's time, guys. It's NCAA tournament time, and, and uh, we, um, you know, every game is uh, the most challenging game of your lifetime, and it's all great teams. It's all championship caliber teams, and, and so we're excited to get going. We are live in Studio B. It's a winning Monday. You know why? Because BYU is in the NCAA tournament. A little bit of breaking news from Duquesne. Uh, head coach Keith Dambrot, who, by the way, was LeBron's high school coach freshman and sophomore year. Yeah. Uh, is retiring at the end of the season. So extra motivation for the Dukes. Some added context. Seven well, it's been ago. good enough. It's been good, and they got back to the tournament. Got to the tournament since 1977. You got it. That's enough. Good job. You're good. Good job. Like, no, BYU, it's... take care of business. Don't <laughs> mess around good. with that. Your career has been successful. Amazing career. You can lose to BYU and sail off into the sunset. <laughs> it's all That's good. Certainly the hope. Please don't cold take us, Duquesne. <laughs> 
This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. As promised, Jerem earlier today going one-on-one with BYU men's basketball head coach Mark Pope to discuss the tournament matchup, the seeding scenario. If he feels like the Cougars were jaded by not getting a five, and what in the world he knows about the Dukes right now. This is BYU Sports Station one-on-one, Jerem and Mark Pope. All right, BYU's dancing, and Mark, uh, what was your initial reaction when you see BYU pop up on the screen, which was very quick into the show, by the way. Yeah, they didn't waste any time getting to it. It was nice. Uh, We're excited. Um, This has been a long time coming, a a long project for us. It's been an unbelievable season in terms of um, uh, just our guys' focus and diligence and work, and, and this is what you're working for, and so now we get a chance to go fight. When you see that you're a six, what's your reaction there? Um, I thought we'd be somewhere in the five, six. Uh, I was, you know, I was, um, uh, you know, I was excited. I think we're, we're, uh, like I said, once you get into this thing, every single team you play is good. Um, and that's why there's upsets, theoretical upsets in this deal every, every single game. Uh, I was really proud of, you know, the fact that we finished 17 on the selection committee's list really is meaningful to us. We're really proud of it, about that because that's the part we can control. And that's the part we kind of fought and worked for all season. And then the seedings are what they are and let's go. We got a, we've got a huge matchup against a great team. Bracketing principles applied, Sunday play notably, but also once Kansas, as uh, Spence and I talked about a little earlier, um, once, once they were a four in Salt Lake, mm-hmm. You probably weren't going to be in Salt Lake at that point, right? Yeah, um, and and that's a guideline, not a rule. Um, so still, the whole thing would have been open. But you know, like I said, the the you know our job, what we focus. I mean, we talk about urgency and faith all season long, and um, the urgency was to get us to 17. And then the faith part is whatever the committee does with that uh, is fine with us. Let's go. But um, and that's the way we'll proceed in the postseason. So you would have been okay being a five in Salt Lake, second round potentially with Kansas. I would have been okay being a two. <laughs> I would have been okay being an eleven. We're just excited to have the opportunity to go compete, and and uh, this is what you work for. Okay, you get uh, Duquesne an eleven seed, and uh, you know Duquesne just won the A10 as the six seed. So they've been on a, a path here. Not an NC State path, but that was pretty notable. That yeah. one was pretty good, by the yeah. way, in November. But now you line up with the Dukes, who are a champ and who are on fire, and now you, now you compete in the NCAA tournament and hope to get to the second round. What do you think of Duquesne? They're great. Uh, you know, we've uh, obviously done a lot of work on them in the last 12 hours here, and, and uh, they um, have two incredibly explosive guards uh, that can score any way they want to. They, they have a, bring a, a huge physicality to the game. They're uh, one of the top defensive teams in their league and in their country, in the country, their country, our country, everybody's country. <laughs> uh, and um, they're hot right now. You know, they've won eight in a row. They're probably one of the longest winning streaks in the country, and, and uh, they're really well coached. And, um, you know, this is a A-10 is, I think, you know, maybe the eighth best conference in the country right after the Mountain West, and we know how good the Mountain mm-hmm. West is. And, and uh, these guys won it and won it outright and won it convincingly. And so um, we got our work cut out for us. But that's what you want. I mean, that's what that's what uh, that's the whole point of this. And so um, it's going to be really, really exciting Thursday morning and can't wait to get to it. In terms of location, obviously, being in Salt Lake would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, any level of disappointment that that didn't happen? Um, I think only for our fans. I think, uh, I guess for the local fans, I think it would have been a really fun experience to be in Salt Lake. But um, the one thing about BYU is, you know, you're a little sad for the fans in Utah and you can't wait to, to celebrate with the fans in Nebraska, right? So uh, um, it's one of the blessings of, of um, being here at BYU is we kind of have homegrown fans everywhere in this country. And so what an incredible blessing for them. And, and uh, there's a reason why we're out there and, and uh, hopefully it involves winning. Of course, Sunday night, the direct to Omaha got sold out. So I got to find a different flight out there to cover. Well, I'm, BYU I'm th- fans are excited. I'm thinking about, you know, uh, on my own, uh, you know, paying for a bunch of fleets of buses. I, I don't know. We got to figure that out. I don't know how long. I was going to calculate how long the bus, bus ride how was from here to there. Is, but yeah. uh, it sounds like an appropriate thing for The Rock to do. Maybe we have to make that happen. I think it's appropriate that you're a 12-minute drive away from where Brigham Young was, uh, you know, sustain the second profit. Very cool. So, hey, there's a little church history there. Kansas City, cool. you're on this Midwest church yes. history tour here. I was born in Omaha, Nebraska. It's a Were you really place. born yes, in I Omaha? Was. Yep, yep. Well then, Very how, how long did you live there? About six months. Six months, two tornadoes, and we were out. 
<laughs> the se- one's fun. The second one, <laughs> it was I'm like, done. We gotta go. <laughs> Don, we're- Big Don was like, okay, I've had enough with the tornadoes. <laughs> we're we're out of here. Okay, the the birthplace of Mark Pope, Omaha, <laughs> Nebraska. Okay, when when you think of the NCAA tournament, and you won a national championship. You've been in that tourney and won six games. What does it require of a team yeah. uh, now that you've done it as a player and now you're in it for the second time as a coach? Um, you know, I think uh, it, it requires a, a refocusing. Um, the teams that are going to be really successful probably are going to do something new. They're not going to reinvent the wheel. The reason they're there is because what they've done as well, they've done it well. But you collect so much baggage and so many battle wounds and so much scarring and, and uh, over the course of the season. Um, it's an emotional journey. It's uh, full of, of um, you know, work and sweat and blood and tears and highs and lows and everything else. And, and so um, I think teams uh, that can harness all of that but kind of release all the baggage and go in as fresh and as, and as, and as deadly focused and energetic as they can have the best chance to compete. And that's a space where our team has been really good. And, and so we have, we have high hopes. You've been able to bounce back from disappointing losses really well this year. I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, you lose Kansas State, you beat Kansas. You, you end up beating Baylor after a disappointing loss, and so on and so forth. Coming off of Texas Tech, you guys were really disappointed, despite the fact you knew you were in the dance. Mm-hmm. You wanted to win that game. Do you carry any baggage into this tournament, or do you feel like, no, 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 we are energized, excited, and are going to be our best selves on Thursday? I mean, as you say that, the thing that's most exciting to me is that, um, you know, you talked about a loss on the road to Kansas State and a loss in the tournament to Texas Tech. And the fact that our floor has risen so high that those are really disappointing losses is really a tribute to what these, these, these guys have done. It's actually super exciting. And I think that you're speaking exactly to what we're talking about in terms of, of, um, of our guys' ability to get fresh, right, and to be focused and, and to, to believe. And, and um, the NCAA tournament is all about that. It's, it's about, you know, you asked this question earlier, and I'll continue to answer it. The other factor is, is, is how together can you be, right? Um, interestingly, as you get overloaded with all the baggage of the season, um, kind of the purging of that is you continue to, like, unload your own personal agendas and it's one thing that that great teams that really are successful in the postseason do and you just become you kind of look inward and look inward and look inward and and it's less about kind of what did I accomplish in this game and what did we and you want to start the season that way and good teams start the season that way and great teams get to a point where you just don't even care anymore all you care is how uh, your team is functioning. We have some of that DNA in us too that um, helps us kind of get back to fresh, helps us deal with um, some of the setbacks that we face through the course of the season and, and uh, could be keys to winning. Do you feel like this team is sort of weathered and hardened in, a, in terms of experience and tough games being played better than any team you've coached given that you just went through the Big 12 ringer You've played a lot of teams that are really high seeds, and yeah. you have some notable wins against teams in this tournament, non-conference San Diego State too, to where you walk into this tournament and you go, okay, we're not going to play a team that is better than anybody we've already played. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think we'll, we, you know, we're going to play teams playing the very best basketball that they can. And so this Duquesne team, for example, is you know as hot as anybody in the country right now. I do feel like we've seen the vast majority of what there is to see in college basketball. Um, and we've responded to it sometimes great and sometimes uh, not as well as we want to. I don't think that um, we're going to face a ton of, uh, of intimidation factor or um, name re- recognition awe. Uh, but I think we also come into this uh, tournament with massive humility. Um, the beauty of this tournament is that uh, you know, as much time as we spend on the seeding and the favorites and all the other stuff, it never works out that way, ever. And so um, there's a reason for that, and that is that, that every team in this, in this tournament is a championship, championship caliber team, uh, maybe this year more than most that way. And so, um, you know, the seedings, the regions, all the stuff you kind of throw out the window. And, and really the only thing we're thinking about right now is we got a, a red hot, great, uh, tremendous uh, Duquesne team that we play on Thursday morning. And, and that's our life right now. And, and that's why the, the, the tournament is so fun is you just get to focus and refocus it over and over and over again. 
looking at the region, so if, if you can get to the second round, right, potentially Illinois or Moorhead State. Illinois just won the Big Ten. And then you've got two Final Four teams in the region, in FAU and San Diego State, not to mention the national champs in UConn. And, uh, yeah, it's, so three of the four. It, is, it feels like the region of death. But you're certainly focused on that first round matchup. But um, all those names you just said, I'm like, wait, I have not thought about it. I like, <laughs> I'm like, my mind is spinning right now. I haven't got there right. Right. Iowa yet. State yeah. could be there in the Sweet 16. Yeah. You know, bracketing principle, they avoid the same conference until the third yeah. round, the Sweet yeah. 16. All this stuff, right? Yeah. But it's going to be a fun tournament. What What was your uh, kind of favorite memory of playing in the tournament when you were at Kentucky? Oh man, it's just a blur, and I think that's the way it's supposed to be if you do it well. Um, you, you played in six games. Yeah. That's a lot of ball. I, 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 you know, um, I remember, you know, we're a one seed um, in the NCAA tournament, and our, our 116 was a really difficult game. That's probably what I remember the most. Uh, you know, we finally kind of sprung loose in the last 10 minutes. And that is, that's exactly what I'm talking about with this tournament. It's why it's so magical. It's why we love it so much. It's why it's probably the greatest um, large scale sporting event in the world is because it happens so fast and because it's so unpredictable and it's a one-off game. Yep. So anything can happen. And, and um, you know, it's just, um, it, it's just really special. And I'm, I'm grateful that we get a chance to participate in it. I'm grateful that we get to do it with this team uh, that has walked this journey over the last couple of years. And, and uh, we're just full of gratitude, man, and can't wait to get to work. Talking to Mark Pope on BYU Sports Nation ahead of BYU and Duquesne in the first round of the NCAA tournament in Omaha. It's another early tip. Yeah. Uh, are you used to the early tips at this point since you had two central time tips of about 11.40? Yeah, it was there. fun. You know, once once that was announced, uh, kind of released last night, I got to talk with some of the guys. And, and certainly there is a little bit of a comfort level, only a sense that we've done it. It's not something that's new. And, um, and so talking to the guys about how we proceeded uh, with – uh, the Central Florida game in the Big 12 tournament and what the day was, the day before prep was and, the, and two days before. I think our guys felt pretty comfortable with it. And, and um, you know, uh, we kind of talked about, do we want to change anything? They're not like, nope, let's, let's run it back exactly the way we did. And so um, the familiarity is nice because it just, you know, it takes out some guessing. We know how it feels and, and what it's like. And, and so um, we can focus more on just the competition. Along those lines strategically, you're going to play a team that hasn't played you yet. Mm -hmm. The Big 12 teams, you know, uh, you can see certain film or certain yeah. second time or whatever. Yeah. What advantage does that play in terms of the uniqueness of how you share the ball and what yeah. a guy like Ali Khalifa presents? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's uh, the same for both teams, right? Um, you, know, w w you know, we have a freshness and an undiscoveredness about Duquesne where we have to kind of figure them out. And so, you know, the, the process is a flurry of phone calls. So you're calling every guy you know in their league. They're mm -hmm. calling every guy they know in our league and trying to swap scouts and and, uh, you know, get an understanding of, of the vibe. You know, on film you see sets and you see uh, scheme and pace and in the numbers you can see everything. But um, talking to coaches, you get a sense of like how the game flows from the perception of an opponent. You get a sense for the physicality and, and what was daunting and what they actually experienced on the court that they hadn't seen in film. And so the exploration of, of the scout is actually really fun and, and exhilarating and trying to do the best you can to figure it out. How much do you give up in a phone call like that to say someone who, say, playing another Big 12 team, yep. where you may be loyal to the Big 12 team, yeah. but also you want to help out like a buddy on another team? Well, I shouldn't say this, but it really depends <laughs> on how much you like the coach you're talking to and how much you like the coach you're talking about. I yeah. mean, it's just, you know, I think in general, I think in general, all of us know that, um, there's only so much you can contribute, right? Because the truth is, is that, you know, while I talk about this kind of vibe and flow and the nuances of a scout, um, those things are, those things are, you know, a 1%. Um, and so it's both, right? Um, uh, and it's, but there is always that, there is always that dynamic at work for sure. <laughs> How's Ali's ankle? And kind of give us an update on how he's doing through Ramadan and fasting yeah, and everything. Yeah, I think he's doing great. Uh, he was terrific yesterday when we were together as a team. Um, actually gave a little speech and crushed it. Uh, and I think the, the longer that Ramadan goes on, I think, um, the, you know, the more comfortable he gets kind of playing and practicing. Um, and it's a, just a, you know, like I said, it's, 
Um, this urgency of faith is really great. Uh, you know, all of our guys kind of have a faith basis. And, and so, you know, Ollie's making, made this decision that he's going to be really faithful and trusting. And then he doesn't know exactly what's going to come from it, but he's going to race that in faith. And that's what he's doing. It's pretty awesome to watch. There are a lot of principles that we all could apply in that space. And if there's any fan base that understands yeah. fasting, it would be yeah. this one, right? Well, and it's, it's with the seating, too. It's, it's, it's really a beautiful, like, it's, it's been such a, a great gospel principle for our guys in the sense of, you know, we could have spent the last 24 hours really twisted up a seed and, and arguing and fact-finding and whatever and all the kind of stuff. And, you know, the fact is, is that we were 17 and, and we're the only team in the first 36 that wasn't seated according to where they belonged. Everybody else in the 36 was seated according to where they belonged. But Meaning you were in the five space, but you were in the We're the first five, five but we were seated as somewhere six. in the sixes. Gotcha. And, and that was the only, actually, is the only team that was misplaced. But... Um, we're a faithful group, man. And so there's a reason for that. And we spent zero time worrying about it. There's no anxiety about it. And so it's just like on to this challenge. There's a reason why we're supposed to be in Omaha and there's a reason why we're supposed to be playing Duquesne. And that doesn't guarantee a win or a loss. It just means there's reason behind it. And when you live your life um, with that type of faith where you're bringing every, you know, our urgency was getting to 17, right? And then you live your life, uh, uh, kind of with that faith basis, it sure takes away a lot of stress and anxiety and allows you to focus more in on the work at hand. It's pretty awesome. And so you're right, like um, as a gospel principle that we can all put in our life, it's it's pretty magical. And his ankle's okay? He's doing great. Yeah, great. he's feeling better. And, and uh, you know, Ali is a work in progress health-wise, like every single guy on our team and every team in college basketball right now. Uh, these guys have been through the wars, and so everybody's about, got aches and pains, but, you know, we expect to put a full roster on the floor and, and uh, go battle together. Okay, well, back to the birthplace. Yes. Mark Pope. Yes. Didn't know that coming in today. I'm here to learn. So we're that, really, that we're really blessed, man. Let's go. Well, all the BYU Sports Nation karma that we could possibly muster goes into Thursday against Thank Duquesne. Thank you, Appreciate Thanks for that. coming in. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. BYU basketball head coach Mark Pope on BYU Sports Nation. Always insightful. Learned a lot there. And I'm glad that Ali Khalifa is feeling good and is going to be available. Like I know that was a huge concern, understandably, for a yeah. lot of BYU fans. Like, okay, what's Ali's status? And looking ahead to next year, Robbie McCombs of Anchorage Foe is reporting that uh, sources are telling him Noah Waterman did, in fact, get his medical redshirt waiver approved. Come on back, Noah! Meaning he's officially good for next year. So Come on back, Noah! That's very exciting. Stay away, suitors, for Mark Pope! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. If BYU <laughs> makes a run, they're going to be after him, man. Okay, check out the BYU football alumni game coming up on Friday night. This is always fun. Last year's has been epic. 8 Eastern time on BYU TV. So you may have noticed that uh, there's more than just basketball going on. After the break, we recap a very busy weekend, including a juicy Zach Wilson trade rumor that could have him going somewhere where there is another former Cougar great playing and playing well. And where BYU women's basketball will be playing in their postseason. This is BYUSA. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for content throughout the day, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer. He is Jerem. Let's roll out a long list of Monday headlines. Men's basketball going dancing again. Mark Pope's team earns a sixth seed in the NCAA tournament, taking on the A-10 champs Duquesne as an 11 seed in Omaha, Nebraska, Thursday at 12.40 Eastern on True TV and BYU Radio. This is BYU's 31st NCAA tournament. Wow, 31. second would have been third in the COVID year under Mark Pope. Mark's got to win that first tournament game. Let's go! Mm -hmm. BYU women's basketball will continue their season. Playing in the inaugural WBIT postseason tournament, the Cougars finished 16 and 16 in year one of the Big 12, Amber Whiting. And the team will take on the four seed Santa Clara on the road on Thursday. This marks the 28th postseason appearance for BYU women's basketball in their program history. This is the new second best postseason tournament, WNIT, kind of the tertiary one now. Um, so BYU, next best thing, let's go. BYU football wrapped up week three of spring practices with the scrimmage Saturday morning. Here's what Kalani Satake had to say about it. Really happy with practice today, um, all live today. So the uh, special teams weren't live, but we had a good amount of live reps. I think O and D had um, 76 reps of live work. QB was live, uh, other than um, Jake Retzloff and Gary Bohannon. We had everybody else go live, and I thought offense did a pretty good job today. Uh, scored a lot of points, made a lot of plays, and, and defense had their moments, but 
overall, I thought the offense had the upper hand today. Today's Kalani practice. Just, you just finished working out? I think you just ran the stairs. Uh, <laughs> today is practice nine of 15. And another football news, Kyrus Tonga signs a one-year deal with the Arizona Cardinals, and this just in, Michael Davis signs with the Washington Commanders after seven years with the Chargers. Seven years? It's been that long already? Wow. BYU baseball, hey, win another Big 12 series. Back-to-back -back games on Friday and Saturday to take that series against Houston. BYU scored three runs on Friday in the bottom of the eighth to rally and win 4-2. to two. Bryce that Robinson right there. Yep, went two for four with that home run to pace BYU's offense. On Saturday, the Bat Cats came out in fresh new uniforms. More on that in a moment. Had 10 runs on 13 hits in a 10-8 series clinching win. Crew Robinson was a single short of the cycle. He was three for four with a double, triple, and a home run. BYU improves to 9-8 and eight overall. They're 3-3 three and three in the Big 12. Softball lost to Parrot, number three, Texas Friday to fall to 16 and nine overall, one and five in Big 12 play. Cougars play at Utah tonight on the Pac-12 Network, which still exists. BYU Gymnastics scored a 196.750. Solid score on Friday night in Seattle, their second highest score of the season. BYU held the top score on two of the four events, thanks to Brindley Anderson's 9925 on the beam. She's a star there. And Kylie Quinto's 9975 on Whoa! the floor. She got a 10 from she one judge. She got a 10. Yep. Up next, Big 12 championships on Saturday. It was the opening weekend of the NWSL BYU's pro affiliate, the Utah Royals, basically. Featured Breck and Mozingo, Cam Tucker, both got in, got a shot. 2-0 loss to the Chicago Red Stars, who featured new signing Nadia Gomsch, who had a shot as well. Ashley Hatch recorded a shot on goal for the Washington Spirit, who lost 1-0 to the Seattle Reign. And Olivia Wade Cotillo made her debut for the Portland Thorns, who lost 5-4 to the KC Current. That stadium, by the way, that KC has, it's specific to their team. Women's sports only. Right on the Missouri River, right by downtown. Drove right by it going uh, out from Kansas City. Pretty cool stadium. Yeah, the Mahomes clan, they were they were lit yep. Yep. on Saturday in that stoked. nine combined goal effort. BYU track and field competing at the Arizona Spring Break Fiesta meet. Riley Hunt, Cameron Bates, Danny Bryant, and Dallin Schertz all won individual events for the men's side. On the women's side, Libby Parkinson improved on her BYU number six all-time spot in the women's javelin, and Annalise Hart tied the program's 10th best mark in the 400-meter hurdles. Women's tennis dropped a match at Kansas State over the weekend. Cougars having a great year still, 12-3 and overall, 4-2 and in the Big 12. BYU Swim and Dive finishing competition at the CSCAA National Invitational Championship over the weekend with the men and women's teams combining for six top 15 finishes. Men's golf tees off this morning at the Palma Valley Invitational in Palma Valley, California. The tournament being hosted by LMU. Play continues through tomorrow. And how about a shout out to Daniel Schneeman, who is doing his work in yeah. spring training for the Cleveland Guardians. He's with the AAA team, we think, right now, but He's having a fantastic spring training, hitting 368, including a home run, a triple, and five runs driven in so nice. far this spring. Just maybe this is the year he gets the long-awaited call-up to the majors. Those are today's headlines. Now we whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. An account called NFL Notifications <laughs> says okay. that Zach Wilson to the 49ers for a seventh round pick is quote, very close. We're not gonna act like this source is super credible. We're just gonna have some fun with it, okay? How do you feel about the idea of Zach potentially going to San Francisco as the backup? Uh, you and I have loved the idea of Zach being a San Francisco 49ers quarterback for a very long time. We knew John Lynch was very, very interested in Zach Wilson when he showed up for Zach's pro day. And they traded up to three that day. But the Jets took him at number two, and then Trey Lance went number three to the 49ers. That, that didn't really work out. out. Brock Purdy is the guy. The 49ers apparently need a solid backup quarterback now. Sam Darnold on the market and, and gone. So yeah. I like it. I think it makes a lot of sense. I would love to see Zach end up in the Bay Area. Oh, my gosh. It, Zach Wilson told us pre-draft. We said, is there a team that fits your skill set best? And he said, Niners. And we were like, whoa! Didn't go to. This would be great. It'd be great to back up Purdy, be with Kyle Shanahan in that yes. system. I think that'd be the perfect spot for him. I don't want to see Zach in the Niners uniform per se as a Seahawks guy, but I think it'd be the best fit for him. I think that'd be awesome. It 100% it would be. And frankly, uh, with the mock-up, he looks pretty good in that 49ers red and gold. He looks, he looks okay. great. Go join Fred Warner. Go yes, hang out with that'd Fred. Be, that'd be fun. The transfer portal, amazingly, opened today for college basketball. What? The March Madness games haven't even started. Transfer portal's open. Is it too early for the portal to be open in college basketball? 
Well, th there's not like a, a date that truly makes sense, Spencer, given how long the seasons are and whatnot. Like in football, we're talking about it's just hard because guys want to transfer teams, get in there for January 1st after the season. You're in mid-season. Teams are still playing. The teams that said no to the NIT, maybe they're getting a jump start in it, on this. Why would they say no to the NIT? I don't know when the right date is exactly, Spence. I don't know. It just feels like there are so many things happening right now that it just, it's, it's chaotic. I don't, what, what, what do you not, what do you get from opening it now compared to like in two weeks when the tournament is winding down and it's April 1st? There's like only 16 I, teams left, but then they're at a disadvantage. They're still playing meaningful games. I mean, why not wait till the end of the season? Can you imagine if NFL free agency opens during the season? It'd be so weird. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> wait till so it's so over weird. by like a month. Wait until the season's over and so then open it up. Second week in April? Yes. April 10th or whatever it would yep. be for yep. sure. BYU women's basketball is playing at Santa Clara in the first round of the WNIT. What do you, WBIT. What do you expect? I think BYU can beat Santa Clara. So I, I'd say I expect a win. Even though it's a road contest, I think they're capable of winning that game. So one win. What about you? I expect BYU to win the title. In fact, let's pull up my bracket. I filled it out already for the WBIT. Okay, I've got BYU beating Santa Clara, and then Washington State probably, and then maybe uh, Florida's the three, and then uh, maybe Miami, and then BYU all the way. I don't care about anybody else, Spence. Okay. Just Brigham Young. Okay. In, Hink all the in way. Hinkle Fieldhouse. In Hinkle Fieldhouse. On April 3rd. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's make it happen, Brigham. <laughs> I love it. BYU is a five seed, perceivably. Yeah, one there, seed. Right? Man. Okay. BYU baseball donned some new uniforms Saturday. Oh, yes. It's so clean. Sailor so Cook clean. for the win. And they clinched the win over Houston in those uniforms. How do you feel about them, Jerem? I don't like them. I love them. I want that hat. Oh, the hat I is. I want the white the hat royal, with the royal yes, blue brim. Yes, paging Trent Pratt. Come on. Let's go. Mate, just put them up for sale. <laughs> they never go on sale. Oh, I'm just walking down to the uh, Miller Park. I'll just talk to uh, Bush. Talk to the let's equipment see, manager. Let's see if uh, Hey, Steve. hi, buddy. Hey, How's man. it going? How's the fam? <laughs> BYU women's basketball playing at Santa Clara Thursday night. And the WBIT you can listen to Shep on the call nine Eastern on BYU Radio. First game on the road to a championship, and yeah, baby, we're going all the way, Spence. How are you feeling about BYU's NCAA tournament draw on the men's side? More responses to your question of the day after the break. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station live in Studio B. Our I wish you could see what happened during the break. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, but I wish you could see it. It's very funny. BYU is the six seed. <laughs> They'll take on the 11 seed Duquesne in Omaha on Thursday in the men's tournament. How are you feeling about the seed opponent location in the first round of the big dance? Hey. At TDHawk13 on Instagram says, Duquesne has the feel-good storyline behind their quest which is always dangerous. Yeah, Keith Dambrot announced his retirement uh, this morning after the last game. So, hey, you got that motivation, A-10 champs. Listen. Keith, you got into the tournament for the first since, time since 77. 77. Like, Mission it's accomplished. All good. Incredible It's all career. good. Like, there's, you Incredible don't need to do career. anything else. You've yeah. accomplished enough. Good. Brigham needs this. Cole Smith on Instagram. Yeah, BYU hasn't won a tournament game in 12 years. Yeah. Gonzaga taking BYU's spot hurts, man. It hurts. I thought I was over her. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Do you really want McNeese? Do you really want McNeese? Well, I don't think BYU fans want yeah, McNeese. Yeah, go McNeese. Gonzaga right? does not want McNeese. Who? St. Mary's playing Grand Canyon? Is yeah, exactly. BYU doesn't want Grand Canyon either. Go Lopes. <laughs> Cougar Bell on X with our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated says, wish BYU would have been seated better. They earned it, but now it's time to make a run in the dance. It lines up. We've talked it's about we love fun, we love man. the six seed. I I love that's the, like you don't have to play one until the elite eight if you make yeah. that run. And you can play Iowa State in the Sweet Sixteen, which in I would the sweet love. Sweet Sixteen, which BYU's beaten. I would love that opportunity in Boston. All right, we'll put a bow on today's show with the rise and shout out next. This is BYU Sports Nation madness. I tell you, BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today's Rise and Shoutout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Men's Hoops going dancing, baby. Can't wait. Six seed taking on Duquesne, 11 seed Thursday morning. Let's go, baby. They're back trying to win their first game in a dozen years in that tournament. Way too long, man. 
Our thanks to today's guest, Mark Pope. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, you never played in March Madness. <laughs> Just a fact. <laughs> that, that he didn't. Or Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Jared Jensen. We'll see you tomorrow in Studio B. Go Cougs, De- baby! Dennis complained about a foul I called on him one time in pickup. It was a foul, Dennis. You know it. You remember. It was in the Smithfield house. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> Still holding on to that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs>